Hi everyone, today we are talking about a 13th zodiac sign, Ophiuchus. Wow. Okay, let's get into this. I feel like there's so much information to cover and I wanted to do a voiceover just so that I could also show you some visuals in regards to images. You know, we can just put everything into perspective. And a lot of people have been asking me, they're like, Moonlight, you know, I know you do the 12 zodiac sign readings, but hey, can you please shed some insight into this? What do you think? Should I be a different sign? Has my sign changed? Am I off mucus? And if so, what does it mean? What does this sign mean? Does it exist? Should I be watching this as my sign like what what should I do and so here I'm gonna tell you my perspective please remember this is my perspective this is what I believe but I'm also going to be giving you some information in regards to this sign so it is a 13th sign the thing about Ophiuchus is that it's actually associated with a real person unlike the other 12 signs which is crazy and this person lived in the 27th century BCE in Egypt and sits behind the sun and represents people born from November 29th to, through to December the 17th which uh, you know definitely moves astrology around a little bit in regards to the other signs and modern astrology is not the most accepting to this sign and we'll talk about that as well. I think it's also very important to mention that this sign does not have an opposite. You know every zodiac sign has an opposite and this one definitely doesn't, so it's very different in that regard. Now this sign actually lays right between Scorpio and Sagittarius, and so do the traits for the sign as well. So if you're an off Ophiuchus, you're essentially represented by a man clutching a serpent, and serpents are actually to do with the human ego, you know, it's about accepting and not destroying. Now you've got the sign sitting right near Scorpio and got some similar traits as I mentioned. Scorpio is known for transformation. Ophiuchus has similar transformative energies but goes into deeper aspects of life and higher states of being and even relates to medicine. So as you can see it goes much much deeper than just transformation. It's also about healing. You know, once we have accepted those aspects we become healed. It also has a lot to do with redemption. You know, people around this sign, very much so, or in this sign should I say, have gifts of healing and helping others to heal, a very balanced person who is open to do so. That's the difference, is that they go a lot deeper into those aspects. So that is Ophiuchus in a nutshell. If we want to dive just more into the characteristics of this particular sign, you know, it's really about progressing well through life and having the authority to look upon yourself positively, um, even though sometimes we can refuse to you know, tap into those aspects, but it's about really digging quite deep, as I mentioned before. And it's also about having a thirst for wisdom and knowledge. And even though this is a 13th sign, the lucky number for this sign is actually number 12. And those actually a part of the 13th sign are known to be extremely passionate and very like a very go-getter mentality, you know, it's known to also be like a double-edged sword in many ways. So Ophiuchus has many wonderful qualities. It is also a jealous, jealous type, not going to lie, you know, secretive, wild temper, but also introverted, believe it or not. So it's it's got lots of characteristics for sure. And, you know, if an Ophiuchus fears or mistrust you, they will shun you. Um, it's that kind of an energy but really digs very deep which is why a lot of these energies also come to the surface. So with that being said, you know, we've really talked about the characteristics of this particular sign but now we should talk about modern astrology and if you feel like you're an Ophiuchus, like what should you do about it or if your sign has changed in any way, shape or form, what should you do? So let's talk a little bit about my perspective on things as well. So first of all, Ophiuchus has its own constellation. It's regarded as a constellation and not a sign. Therefore, it has been said to stick with the 12 that we already know of. The other thing as well is that modern astrology kind of rejects the idea of Ophiuchus. And even though it does create a lot of shifts and changes in terms of the astrological signs, as you can literally see here, right, things do change and switch up quite a bit. First of all, it doesn't exist in the old and modern astrology systems officially, but unofficially and in some esoteric circles it does exist, as we know of. Ophiuchus does not have an element. That's right, there's no fire, water, earth, 
or air to this sign. And if it were to be totally implemented, it would change the old systems with some degrees and modern astrology does not like this. It's important to put emphasis on the does not like this part. It's a sign that corresponds with spiritual awakening and Kundalini serpent force. So it's a major importance to be honest, you know, because it's so subtle and important only to spiritual practice and not to um, people that have intense worldly desires. It's being neglected, but it's neglected because of this. The tarot card that corresponds with this sign is the major arcana of the world card, which is also the major arcana of ultimate enlightenment and the ending of one's spiritual journey. Even if the spiritual journey is never finding the mediator you know, has reached some form of samadhi, nirvana, or saratori state, and he can enjoy the entire existence looking at it through the eyes of the eternal. So yes, it's a very important sign, but people do not use it because of the mentioned issues. Number one, it will mean that they will have to change everything, and yes, European astrology is not accurate because it misses a few degrees every month. Um, it's accurate to a certain point, but certainly not perfect. The Vedic astrology is way more accurate and correct upon the degrees of every zodiac sign, so basically stick to what we have now unless there is a big change, or simply go by Vedic astrology for your sign readings. I think that's also quite an important thing to mention as well. You can always work out what your Vedic sign is. So personally, I would say stick to what we have now. There isn't necessarily a big reason to change what we've already got and to many aspects or many degrees, people already resonate with their sun sign or their moon sign or their rising sign that we already have in place. So it's a difficult one, it really is. And also there's just so much information that this sign does in many ways still lack that we still need. So it's, it's one of those things that's still regarded as a constellation and not an actual sign. So let me know, you know what you think about all of this in the comment section below for sure. But if you want to follow it and you believe in it, then of course there's nothing wrong with that. We all have our own beliefs and absolutely, you know, you may find that actually maybe some of your traits align to it or maybe some of your traits actually align to a new zodiac sign that maybe you fall into because of this particular sign and the changes that it would bring. So, you know, it's very subjective and of course, you know, we have generated birth charts which don't take into consideration this particular sign. So, it's just, you know, a mix of information, there's a lot with it, but still it's regarded as a constellation and not a proper sign, it also doesn't have an element tied to it. So, you know, it's one of those things, but definitely do let me know in the comment section below um, what you think and also, you know, your feelings, your thoughts, let me know. I'm really intrigued and fascinated, interested to see what you have to say, so let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, but I hope this cleared things up and... Uh, you know, you got to see my perspective as well, or hear about it at least. Take care, everyone. Bye!